Well, welcome everybody. Tonight we're going to look at a great passage of scripture. I mean, is there a bad one? I, I'd say, you know, this is this is another one of my favorites. I mean, is there? I, I, don't, I haven't met one I didn't like, I think. Um, but this is from Genesis chapter 32. We're going to start at verse 22. And uh, we will do that here. And I'll share the, like I did last time, I'll share the scriptures on the screen and that kind of thing. Again, we are being recorded uh, and will be shared later. So anything you say will be heard by someone else. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. I'm glad to have you on and it's better to have a conversation. Well, why is he looking at me when he said that? I didn't look at you. <laughs> uh, <Yep>. <laughs> guilty conscious dad, is that what you're saying? <laughs> All right, well, I want to begin us, as we gather, I want to begin us with a prayer. So let us pray together. God, you see us. You see our struggles. You see our difficulties. You see our possibilities. And you see our promise. So help us to see what you see, oh God. Help us to hear you say our names. You are a good God. A God who is present in the scramble. And in the end, you always have a blessing to give. So for this and so much more, we give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So tonight, looking, I'm going to share my screen now, looking at the story from Genesis chapter 32. We're going to start at verse 22. If you have your own Bible, I encourage you to follow along. And like I did last time, I might invite other readers. But let me start just by getting the whole scripture before us. So listen to this story that Genesis tells us. The same night, he, Jacob, got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford at the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was pointed out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. So I wonder, what do you remember about Jacob? Let's start with Jacob. Who is this guy, Jacob? Oh, my internet connection is not good. Can you guys hear me? Are we back? Hey, we're back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I lost you somewhere in there. I was asking, did I finish the scripture reading? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to start with the conversation about Jacob. Who is this guy, Jacob? What do you remember about him? 
He was a twin. He was a twin. What's his twin brother's name? Esau. 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 Is he the oldest twin? Was he the firstborn or the second? Second. 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 Mm -hmm. He was the younger of the two. And why is that significant? Why would I bring that up? Because you're the, the younger. Because <laughs> I'm the younger brother? Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. It's always the younger brother's fault, I know. The birthright goes to the oldest. The birthright goes to the oldest. Good. So you're remembering, Gene, you're remembering another part of the story to come. Why does it matter that he's the younger brother? You remember what his name means? What does Jacob mean? Why do they call him that? It has to do with his birth. He came out holding this heel. That's right, Dad. When he was born, Jacob, Esau came first, and Jacob came out holding on to Esau's heel. It, Jacob means heel grabber, <laughs> one who grabs onto the heel. But that's not a flattering name. Uh, it's it's like being called Tricker or Trixie or um, someone who trips you up. Um, well, he's a he's gonna be a mama's boy who is a trickster. Okay, so oh, good. So, all right, let's fast forward the story of Esau and Jacob. Jacob is mama's boy, and Esau is his father's favorite. Now, not you know, we always worry about family favorites, but. In the story, in the biblical story, that's what we're told. And how does that play out? What happens between the brothers? Susan chatted it earlier. Esau, the oldest, should get the blessing, as Gene mentioned. But Jacob steals his brother's blessing. Steals it in a couple of ways. First off, remember, Jacob could cook. He was the chef in the family. And he apparently made a really good stew. One day, his brother comes home from doing his brother's favorite thing, which was what? What was Esau good at? Honey. It was a hunter, right? So he comes home from a long day of hunting. He comes in and smells that stew. Can you smell it? What do you think? What does the stew smell like? Wild game, probably. Wild game? I wonder what spices he would have used. Can you smell your favorite stew cooking? And you feel maybe you've already eaten dinner. I just finished mine. But you just get a little bit hungry for that stew. Well, Esau walks in the door, and he is a big hungry for the stew. He wants a bowl of the stew, and he's willing to bargain with the very thing that is most valuable, his birthright. So Jacob steals the birthright for a bowl of stew. Then fast forward a little bit. His old man has grown blind almost, and well, maybe a little senile. And Mama helps Jacob out. Do you remember what Mama did to help Jacob out? Put fur on his hands. Put fur on his arms, because his brother was hairy, and his brother probably smelled like fur all the time from all the hunting and the being outdoors. So sure enough, Jacob goes to his father to receive the blessing. His father thinks he's blessing the oldest son, passing on the, the blessing as it was traditional in their customs and their culture. But Jacob steals the blessing. So really a second fool, a second thievery. 
Is that the only time that Jacob was a trickster, that Jacob played a trick? Do you remember another trick that was played? Yeah, he, he played a trick on Laban to get the best of the sheep. All right. So, yep. Jacob understood animal husbandry. Now, yep. You have to remember at this time that that sheep and goats were considered blameless, were considered pure, if they weren't spotted, if they had no color variation, if they were just one single color, uh, solid white, for example. But Jacob, long before uh, Mendel and his genetics with his peas, had figured out you could breed certain animals together and you would get purebred, or you could breed certain ones together and you would get spotted. And so Laban only wanted the purebred ones. They were considered more valuable. Okay, so Jacob bred a whole bunch of spotted ones. I think he knew the genetics and knew that he could unbreed and get back to purebred later in life. So anyhow, he ends up ripping off Laban, leaves him, yes, with some herds, but takes a whole lot more when he leaves him and just rips off his uncle. The only thing about that story that I always wonder is what did the pole with the spot on it have to do? That's a good question. Uh, that's not a story for tonight. That's a good question. All right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to build up who we know this Jacob guy is. All right, so we've talked about the, the separation and the tricks he played on his brother, the tricks he played on his father, the tricks he played on his uncle Laban. But someone plays a trick on Jacob. Who plays a trick on Jacob? Laban. And what does Laban do, Dad? He, he makes him marry the ugly daughter first. <laughs> yeah, he has to work seven years and finally on his wedding night when he goes into his uh, honeymoon tent, if you will, it ain't the one he loves is Leah, not Rachel. Now most of us get the next part wrong. He does get to marry Rachel, actually gets to marry her pretty quickly. He has to work an additional seven years, but he, he gets to go ahead and marry her, even though he does have to work an additional seven years. So tricking and playing tricks has been part of Jacob's whole life. Indeed, it's his name. It's how he's made a living. It's the way he goes about life in the world. That's who Jacob is. That's why the name matters. The next question is, who do you think this person is that wrestles with him? Let's see. In verse 24. <clears throat> Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Who was it? Uh, All, right. All right. One possibility is God. His own conscience. His own conscience. Another possibility. An angel. An angel. Later in the well, passage, he says that he's seen God. I mean, you know, I guess technically we all have seen God, but I mean, it's just that juxtaposition made me think that it was God or an angel or the spirit of God, something like right? that. Right. Right. So, right. Later on, you're right. Um, pull it back up. Especially when he names the place, uh, you know, in verse 30. So he called it Peniel, saying, For I've seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. All right? But up here earlier, we don't have that same kind of confidence of who this is. It could have been God, could have been an angel, could have been his own conscience, any other nominations for who he's wrestling with. Esau. Could have been his brother. Remember, he's on his way to meet his brother. 
That's why he sent his whole family, his whole entourage. If we had read earlier, you would see all the gifts that he sent over, all the gold, all the sheep, all the goats, all the clothes. He sent this whole entourage as a gift to appease his brother. He's afraid his brother's going to kill him. Couldn't blame him. <laughs> would be his brother. Well, I, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you. This is the this is what you could write your PhD in religion about, or Old Testament. Is who is the man that Jacob wrestles with? I have read all of the above and all of the commentaries that I've ever looked at on this passage. So you pick the one you think is best and go with it. Um, if I were preaching on this, I would have to make a decision. Who do I think this is? It's interesting to think it might be his own conscience because I've certainly wrestled in the night with myself. But then why would I need to bless myself? That's where you get the question mark. Where do, how does that fit into the Jacob's wrestling with himself? Why would you... Why would you break your own hip? <laughs> right, exactly. That doesn't make much sense either. He just slipped. He just slipped. Well, there. Okay, maybe so. Maybe so. I haven't tossed and turned in my sleep quite that bad yet. <laughs> Are you preaching on this next Sunday? Uh, I am not. Uh, I am not. Uh, we, have let, a guest preacher. we have a guest preacher next Sunday, yeah. so that lets me off the hook a little bit. Yeah, lets you off the hook big time. Yeah. <laughs> Jeannie used the word theophany. There's a nice $10 word for you. Theophany, a God sighting, or when God reveals God's self. A moment when God reveals God's self. What does penial mean? Penile, all right. Well, let's do a little, yeah. do a little searching here. So I'll show you some of my tricks. Alice. Trying to highlight this word. Search for the word. Come on, internet, do your thing. Oh, I thought you could use your Hebrew or. <laughs> no, any P Hebrew I learned is pretty much gone. Study Bible would help us here. My internet's not helping us. Well, because what, what's interesting, Dad, that you brought that up is it's Peniel, and then notice in the next verse, it's Penuel. It changes one letter, and there is significance to that. Did you see Susan's? I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, so Susan says that Peniel means face of God. So Susan, do you, does your Bible tell you what Peniel means when you change the one letter? L is still God. It's something of God, but I'm not sure what that word means. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Let me go grab my... Everybody's frozen again. <clears throat> A variant of Peniel. Somebody said it's a variant. Says it's the face of God. We lost Chris. Uh, I'm here somewhere. Can you hear me? Uh, can hear you. Can't see. Yeah, frozen in time. I'm having it really computer troubles big time tonight. Here we are. There you are. Here I am again. Yes. Verse 31. Yeah, my, my study Bible doesn't tell me the difference. Well, that would be worth chasing after, but that's not going to happen tonight, apparently. My computer's just not holding on very well.
I want to go back a little bit and talk a little bit about the setting. So we've talked about who Jacob is. But let's talk about what's happening here before we get to the wrestling match. So Jacob's been on a long journey. He's traveled for many days. He has sent livestock. He sent his family, his wives, his slaves, his 11 howling children. <laughs> and now he is at the river. And the scripture says, Jacob was left alone. What do you imagine it sounded like? Peace and quiet. Contemplation time. Time for contemplation, peace and quiet. What else? What else do you hear? River. You hear the river? Can you hear the babbling brook? What is it like to be alone? Sometimes when you're alone, you have to come to grips with your fears. Go ahead, Liz. You start reviewing things and, um, you know, if you're me, then regrets and anxieties and, you know, those things like to jump on me. So, right. so we start <laughs> um, to might have to be things to regret. <laughs> And yeah, all right, so we're reviewing things, and there may be regrets and anxieties that come forward. Maybe you know the term ruminating, when we kind of get fixated on something, and it kind of keeps going and going and going in our head. I get to watch my favorite Western movies. <laughs> When you're alone, you get to pick what's on TV. I see. <laughs> so imagine yourself having traveled a long journey, finally by yourself, alone, by the river. How's this meeting with Esau going to go? How is this meeting with Esau going to go? That's in his mind. Maybe you remember this book mm -hmm. from Dr. Seuss, Oh, the Places You'll Go. There's this one page. Then you'll be all alone, whether you like it or not. Right. Alone is something you'll be quite a lot. What happened to Jesus when he was all alone? What are some things that Jesus did in his all alone time? Do you remember? Pray. 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 <laughs> he would go off to a solitary place, sometimes the scriptures say, a uh, alone place, a desolate place. I've often wondered if they're talking about a literally a place where it was just wide open spaces or if it was desolate in the sense of nobody was there. Oh. And more of an emotional desolate. I think that's where we find Jacob. You have the opportunity to commune with yourself or with God or whomever. Uh, which can be a very good thing, of course, but it's also a time of often difficulty. It's sort of frightening. Right. So it can be a beautiful thing, communing with yourself and with God, but it can also be the dark night of the soul, can't it? Yeah. Well, you're forced to be alone with your thoughts. 
which is why some of us always have music playing mm-hmm. or always have the TV on. It's evidently he figured out how to handle his fear of meeting his brother because he decided to put the children out front and then the women and <laughs> he came along last. <laughs> he was yeah, pretty he, yeah. He's really trying to butter him up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I think he knew that his brother wasn't gonna harm his children or the women, and so they were kind of a buffer. Yeah, that's right. That's good. All right. All right. Let's uh, dig into the wrestling part now. I've tried to set the scene as best I can here. Um, Leland, do you have your Bible where you can read, or you want to just read what I've got on the screen here? Uh, the well, well, it's, it's not showing, showing all of the readings. Oh, so yeah. The words of the right-hand side are not there. Okay. If I can. Yeah, I can't no, make okay. it small enough to get them all. Okay. That's not helpful, then. How about that? Is that better? No. no. All right. Okay. Does, some, does someone have their Bible in front of them that they'd be glad to be a reader? What do you want read, Chris? We'll start at verse 24. To, the, to verses 24 through 30. Okay, I can read it. All right. Thanks, Patsy. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. Good, thank you. So describe to me, if you were to make the movie or paint the painting, what does this wrestling match look like? Oh, they probably roll down in the water and back out and uh, along on the bank and what have you. They might even got some branches and beat each other. I mean, you know, it's pretty, you're going to do it all night. You're going to have to do something. All right, good. I've got a question. Go for it. So (laughs) whoever this is, is a man that, could not overpower Jacob for whatever reason, but could just with a single touch, touch his hip and wrench it as he yeah. And then, then the man says, let me go for it is daybreak. And Jacob refuses. So this is an odd power struggle. So. Yeah, good. yeah, so an odd power struggle. And all night long, he can't overcome Jacob, so Jacob's a force to be reckoned with. That's one thing we need to say here. But this guy is able to dislocate his hip. What a dirty trick. I mean, that's against all the WWF rules, isn't it? <laughs> it's the WWF, Chris. I mean, this guy attacks him at night, you know, and I bet that was a life and death struggle. And that's why he wouldn't let. I get back up and hit him again, you know? All right, good. So, yeah, so it's interesting. So, life and death struggle. Yeah. So maybe he had, maybe they did roll into the river and he held him underwater. I hadn't thought of that before. 
point of it's a night he can't you know he can't see really what what is coming out you know who knows the guy may have a huge stick or a big, or a big a huge knife or something right I'm not told about but um in my bible it says um when after the man asks what his name is and Jacob answers him, um, the man then said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. So that's interesting because I think in yours, it just says you've struggled with God face to face or whatever, however it was phrased. Anyway. Yeah, the face to face bit is in verse 30. So yeah, you're right. In the renaming in verse 28, you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Yeah. Yeah, and my, my translation said uh, your life is spared rather than or, you know, preserved. Mm -hmm. Chris, Go ahead, Jerry. Could you have been with a deep like a deep nightmare, he was struggling within himself. Yeah. He was now really? two people. Mm. Could it also be, um, you know, something negative, like like wrestling with a demon, you know, a spiritual attack? Yeah, absolutely. Under the cover of darkness, a dark enemy. I mean, think... That if you add the dark element to this thing, this is a fearful moment. It's a night terror, if you want to go that route, that it's like Jerry suggested, it's a, this is a nightmare, but this is the time you wake up and you're uh, thrashing about and you're just profusely sweating um, and you, you do not wait awake rested. It could be that. It, it could be um, he was fighting for his life, quite literally. It, it, and so, you know, if he, he, was, he was afraid of his brother, maybe this, you know, you can make a case his brother came to kill him. <laughs> oh. Well, Jacob had a lot of demons, and um, yeah, that, that could have been one of them right there. Yeah. Could be evil personified, surely. You asked earlier, have you ever asked, asking us, have we ever been at times uh, alone in our mind? It becomes very active, wandering all over the place. A lot of times people will struggle with themselves of what has happened to them earlier or things that they didn't do, what they should have done. So that's what I was thinking a while ago. He might have been struggling within himself. And the demons, right. uh, the demon was there within him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I, you've heard me say that I, I'm not big on the devil made me do it, but because I'm more worried about the evil that lies within, that is so close at hand that uh, right. will tempt me or curse me equally. The evil that happened some time ago and is still in it, you've got to deal with it. That's right. Whether it be something I did that I regret, something right. I didn't do that I wish I did that I regret, something that happened to me that I regret. I mean, it can be any of that, right? Right. What about, what about the broken hip? I mean, is that some sign of atonement? Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I, you know, I've always taken that just as a really dirty trick. <laughs> the the broken hip was when he was so badly involved in himself, he slipped and fell. <laughs> he <laughs> might have fallen off of a cliff. <laughs> well, so you're saying he just got up in the night and had to go to the bathroom and tripped and fell and made up the whole story, Jerry? <laughs> he could have. <laughs> now that's just Jerry reaching back. That's all. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, but what about this? It's almost daybreak. Let me go because it's almost daybreak. 
so what? Why didn't you call to let me go? Because it's almost midnight. Whatever, whatever he's what? doing, he regards as, or maybe he regards as not something he once revealed. And, mm. he, you, know, he wants, you know, it's going to be his secret or whatever, maybe, you know. Yeah, and interesting. But in the day, like doing this. There's something about, there's something secretive in the dark. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Well, again, this reminds me of the spiritual attack part of it, and that, that maybe it is, you know, something like a demon. I don't know why. Maybe that's just yeah. folk or something in my yeah. mind. You can't be in the presence of light or something, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe we've watched one too many um, vampire movies. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, or Lord of the Rings probably trolls or something, you know. Right, right. There we go. Um, yeah. I'm wondering. He, it said he he sent uh, the wives across at night before he went back or stayed over there, and they probably had some kind of guards and company with them to keep them safe. But they couldn't have gone very far in the darkness. Yeah. Well, they may have been on the other bank, and most of the rivers over there are not that wide, so they would have been seeing. Uh, we've been able to see him in the daylight and the guards or whoever uh, else was, was, you know, taking care of the... Uh, yes, it, he, he didn't say it, it was at night. Yeah. Yeah, verse 22, that same night, he got up, took his two wives, his two maids, yeah. his 11 children, and crossed the ford. He got 11 sons. I don't know how old they were there at that point. But, but anyway, people could come and intervene if they saw what was going on. Yeah. You know, it makes you wonder, did they hear him? That they yeah. hear. I mean, this would have been a commotion. Yeah, it should have been a big one. Is that, I've not broken my hip, but I think it doesn't feel too good. When I have a wrestling in the night, the peace comes to me in uh, Psalms mm. or scripture that I have remembered. And so Jacob also turns to God, or if, if you assume that he is wrestling with God as well as men. Interesting. I will not let you go until you bless me. Is that where you're thinking, Mom, right there at verse 26? Yes, and tell me, tell me your name. Uh-huh. You know, uh, others have asked God, what's your name? And the only answer ever given was, I am. Right. Or in Job, a uh, description of creation. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I think I've often, uh, verse 26, I've, I've wondered about this. I will not let you go unless you bless me. If I'm in a wrestling match and somebody says, let me go, I don't know that that's how I would end that. <laughs> I think I might have let them go, especially if I'm winning. I don't know. No, you won't, because that would be a trick. They'd turn right around and flip you over. Yeah, maybe so. I only know that because of my grandson's wrestling. There you go. <laughs> I just bit. I, I just bit my brother. That's all. That's what I did when I couldn't win. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> is there any kind of um? Is there any kind of like uh, cultural meaning? Like I think of Sodom and Gomorrah and the guest host relationship that was there. Um, you know, is there any meaning to asking your opponent to bless you? Like, does that? protect you from them in the future or something? That's a good question. I don't know about that. I can, you're right to say, what is your name? Knowing someone's name gives you power. Um, not necessarily power over them, but it, there is a, at least an equalization of power. I've heard, I've heard that said before. You know, we'll talk about, can you name your problems? Just by naming the problems, you have power over them or you can start to address them. There's something about naming there.
but I don't know about the blessing piece. Even though uh, God doesn't give a name or the other person doesn't give a name, Jacob receives a new name, which is significant throughout the scripture. That's a turning point. Right. So good. Thank you, Mom, for driving us to the next part. So Jacob, we uh, spent a lot of energy when we started talking about this name, Jacob, which we uh, sometimes I, when I preach on this, I call him Trixie because he's a trick player or if you know, you might use the Batman image of Joker. That would be another good name for Jacob. He's the Joker. And and maybe in all of that full evilness of that character in the in the Batman series. But notice here we have you shall no longer be called Joker or Jacob, but you will be called Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. So again, somebody with a study Bible that they trust, what does the name Israel mean? Prince with God. Friend? Prince, P-R-I-N-C-E, Prince with God. God rule. Okay, God rules, Prince Mine with says, God. Mine says Israel means he struggles with God. All right, so we got lots of different definitions here. I'm gonna pull up a possible one. Wow, look at that. Name is used over 2,431 times. I was trying to see if I could see here. Some, here we go. If we get an etymology. <laughs> so L is the word for God, and Yashar is to be upright. Now, let's try it Yeah, so here's where Janie's um, Bible said Prince of God. Here's Sar, this word, the root word, could mean ruler or chief. Interesting. So apparently, this. Um, this website, this look at this word, says <laughs> lots of things. It can mean lots of things. So that's not terribly helpful. Um, all right. So I want to, um, we need to, we got seven minutes. Let me do one piece with this passage. We're leaving like we did last time, more questions than answers. Um, but I wanted to show you how uh, art, how the visual arts have represented this passage. So this is Rembrandt and his depiction of Jacob wrestling with the angel, That's how he went with that. What do you notice in the image there, the painting? What do you notice about this wrestling match? Well, there, there seems to be a wing like an arm above and then another one in the middle. So, yeah, that's the angel. Was it? Yeah, yeah, well, that's I what see. I mean. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah but, so you see. but there's the wing above it, too. Sure. But, right, so you got a winged angel dressed in white. Notice how the angel's arms are posed. Oh, my God. More like an embrace, yeah. The one hand clearly down on the hip, but one hand kind of cradling his neck. Yeah. 
painting we think dates around 1659. All right, so let's look at another one, a little, come fast forward a couple hundred years. What do you notice in this painting? What do you see in this wrestling match? Angels got him by the head. The angel's got a, a lock on his head. Yep. But what's Jacob getting ready to do? Looks like he's got to pick him up and body slam him. It's a body slam, yeah. Jacob's yep. got the leverage. He's got his legs bent. The angel's got a toe. That's about it left on ground. Now, when I was reading about this painting, Yes, the angel appears in white, but notice that the wings, the coloring in the wings, is the same as the coloring on Jacob. Mm -hmm. So not only are they bound in a wrestling match, but they're they're bound even in their color, according to this artist. They're, they are more cool. intimate. That looks tiny. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, so fast forward, a little more modern here. This one's a little harder to see. More like Picasso, cub cubism. Here is yep. the head. That's the face of the angel. You see the angel's wing here and here. And here is the head of Jacob. Mm. I think it's the, what I think is interesting about this picture is it seems that the angel is masked. See that? Like he's got a mask, a, a blinder on, so we can't quite tell who he is. This almost seems like it could be a, an image of the idea of wrestling with conscience, though, too, because it, it just seems like one giant figure instead of. Mm -hmm. Several or two figures. Well, or it, or it could be real lovers or something. You know, they're really bound together. There. The, yeah. You know, there, there's that. That is that's that looks more like an embrace to me than it does like a a struggle. Mm. Right. Good. Mm. Yeah, clearly, these two are intertwined. Maybe more embrace. Maybe more intimate than we have talked about thus far. And Chris, one thing that I see that first caught me is the very top, you talk about the head, is right around it. To me, that looks like a broken hip. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You know what I don't see what I don't see in these are any any mention of a river. I got one last one to show you. Go ahead. In the bottom of that picture, it's green, so it could be be often banks on a river are green. Yeah. I don't know. True. <laughs> one more to share. Wait, hang on. Come on, computer. There we go. This is the most recent, painted in 2012. <clears throat> Looks like Je Joseph's going Jacob's going to body slamming. <laughs> What's the? What are the extra hands? They're just pulling back the scene to show it, to reveal it to us. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, pulling back the curtain. Sometimes a curtain is a symbol of revelation. Something is being revealed. And then the hands could be the hands of God or not sure. Not sure. Could the ribbon be a, sign, a ribbon showing Jacob's life? Yeah, the, the twists and turns of life. 
Yes. Right. See, of course, you can see the musculature of the athlete. I mean, that the, the, the muscles, every one of them is tensed and flexed. I think the uh, robe of the stranger, the angel, God, whichever, you don't see a head, but the robe kind of does bring the water image, the way it flows in puddles and pools. And the image of the night sky is interesting because it looks like those, uh, those pictures that are taken where um, you see, can see the stars moving in the sky. So it suggests yeah. a, a long amount of time passing that this is going on for a while. Nice. Yeah, like when they leave the aperture open and the, the, sky, the stars turn. Yeah. That's cool. So a couple of different artists' rendition of this story. Um, one of the things, and, and mom reminded me of this earlier when we were talking on the phone before we started the call. One of the things I think is so interesting about this story is when Jacob leaves, two things have happened. Two things, yeah, two things have happened, maybe more than two, but two that are clearly identified. One is he's had his name changed. He doesn't go by Jacob anymore. He goes by Israel. For most of the stories after this, you'll see him referred to as Israel. Sometimes Jacob, but usually Israel. There's something else that happens that doesn't change, that, that has changed. He, before this story, it wasn't true, and after this story, it's true. What happens to him? He has a uh, permanent injury. He has a limp now. He has a limp now, good. I was gonna pull it up, but you named it rightly so, good. He has a limp. He's weakened. He's weakened. Good. This is verse 31. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Yeah. Is that a sign of weakness? Weakness changes us. It changes the way we see things. The, in this case, the way he walks. It it makes you more vulnerable. So now he has a vulnerability before he goes to meet with his brother, who he's afraid is going to kill him. Yeah. Well, it it also makes him, well. The vulnerability is a good point because I mean that can be a good thing be vulnerable you're open to something so he's you know this moment of transformation is it suggests the possibility for further transformation very you know that very interesting stars aren't necessarily a sign of weakness it's this a sign of survival yeah so. right it's your, your battle your badge is almost a battle, you know. Right. Yeah. So it's a it, it's a clearly a constant reminder to him of what happened. But it would also be an outward reminder to others. Interesting. Well, I kind of like what Judy said about changing him, because before he's been a trickster, he's always done things indirectly, and yet here he faced it straight on. And he came away a changed man as a result of it. Very yeah. nice. So he's gonna maybe he's gonna face his brother for the first time ever straight on man to man. Yeah. And it gives him something he'll always remember. Yeah. Interesting. Walks away a changed man in many ways. So if I were preaching on this, that's how I'd end it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You wrestle with God, you wrestle in the night, you, you uh, 
you know, you hold on until you're blessed and then you walk away or change the man. Yeah. May all of our encounters with God be thus. There's something to say about perseverance. Certainly. Well, thank you for wrestling with this scripture with me. I'm trying to pull and tug at it and figure out what's going on here. It's better when we do this together. It is a little after eight, so I want to honor our hour commitment to one another, but it is certainly good to see all of your faces and hear your voices. And I pray God's blessings on you. Let's close with a prayer. Thank you, O oh God, for taking us seriously enough that you would wrestle with us. For holding on and for struggling with us. For honoring us that we are strong enough to fight with you. So we hold on. We persevere even though wounded because we want your blessing. We long for your blessing. So before the night is over, bless us. And may we, when we walk away, may we not forget, but have a constant reminder of your presence with us wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.